Welcome back to the Running Eagle Sports Network. My name is Billy Mangum, the Sports Information Director here at Life University. I'm joined today by head men's basketball coach Kevin Easley. Uh, coach, thank you for joining me. Oh, it's great, great to be here. So what we're going to do today, um, we've been sitting down with the coaches, kind of going over the uh, expectations, you know, point out a couple key matchups over the year um, for the 2019-20 season. Um, you know, first off, have to go back to last year. Um, absolutely, congratulations. Huge, sure. uh, huge run in the Mid-South Conference Tournament. Um, how do you kind of take that momentum that you had going on last year and kind of propel that and, you know, use that as a motivation for this year? Well, we, we definitely want to get the program back to national prominence. Um, um, we were happy in year one to have 19 wins, get to the conference championship, um, beat a number of ranked teams throughout the season. Uh, we felt we felt like we that that kind of momentum would lead us into recruiting well and being able to um, to to try to get more home games this year to to even build on that, so our fans can see our product that we put on the floor. Yeah, I, I you know just just looking at your uh, your schedule, um, that'll be uh, going out in the next couple of days. Um, you know, a lot of home games, uh, hosting two classics again, like you did last year. Um, you know, and, and I think we had a lot of good competition in those classics last year. Um, definitely will be interesting to see. Uh, lost a couple of upperclassmen last year. Um, but, you know, from, from talking with you and, you know, seeing the guys around the gym, a lot of a lot of you know high school freshmen. You got some pretty good transfers. I would say you have a pretty even mix of, uh, of both of those. So, what have you kind of been before we get into your schedule? You know, what have you kind of been seeing? Um, you know, from your team, they all got here pretty early, had a chance to mesh pretty well. Um, you know, how how is the uh, team chemistry and everything moving, uh, looking right now? I think the biggest thing for me was cohesion. I wanted to make sure that we got our guys here. We were fortunate to bring them in in June to have those guys to be able to work together, train together. We actually had a three-week mini camp. And, you know, the freshmen coming in, I was fortunate to have some upperclassmen starters that get, that came back and returned. So they're able to tutor the younger guys and kind of bring them along. And I wouldn't call them, you know, little brother, big brother type of thing. But they do, you know, they do look after those guys making sure they get to class on time, making sure study hall's done, and things of that nature. So uh, having them here as opposed to getting them here in October uh, has really created uh, a chemistry that we didn't have last year. Uh, you know, last year, obviously, we were here for three weeks and then we started playing. But, you know, now guys are itching and ready to play. And, um, you know, I really do like the mix that we have because, you know, like you said, we have some transfers. And, you know, once those guys leave, then those freshmen can carry the torch for those guys, you know, for the program when it's their turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the one of the big things that, um, you know, in, in following, you know, sports and, and basketball specifically, um, if you have a good core group that can lead um, those newcomers, the both freshmen and transfers, um, you know, and I think you've got probably some of the, um, you know, some of the best basketball athletes I've ever worked with as, as returners. You know, you got Mike White, who's just an outstanding, outstanding kid, um, very, very respectful, um, you know, works his tail off pretty much at all times. You got Connor, who pretty much shot lights out last year. Uh, you got Cam, Tori, um, you know, you've, you've almost got your starting five back, um, minus one or two pieces here right, and there. Right. Um, definitely, definitely excited to, uh, to see that. So let's jump into the schedule. Um, just a little over a month away now. Yeah, a little over um, a month. Kind of crazy. Very crazy, <laughs> it's, it's fast and furious. So it's kind of um, quick. Start off the year, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll have like a, an exhibition or two, but that'll just be uh, between us, um, between, the, uh, between the kids and, you know, probably get a trial run for uh, the table crew and everything like that. Um, but start out the season November 2nd um, and then November 5th at home against uh, Southeastern Baptist and Thomas University. Um, from what I've seen, uh, Thomas University usually has a, a pretty, pretty decent pretty decent team um, I know their their soccer programs are, are pretty outstanding mm -hmm. so talk about the uh, you know d the decision to um, you know start out the start out the year with uh, two two home games back to back and then we'll get into the classics yeah I thought it was important last year you know when I took the job I inherited a schedule that wasn't mine and I think it's important if you want to grow the brand uh, to be able to get 
you know, fans to come in and student athletes to come in, students to come and watch the games and, and support you. And, you know, I, starting early, especially, you know, we had to bring in eight new people. And I thought, you know, being able to play at home and, and giving some type of a comfort level uh, would be really good for our guys and be a really good start. So, um, you know, Southeastern Baptist is, is a team, it's an upstarted team, and um, they've got a lot of talented athletes coming in, not really sure what we're going to get with them. But uh, Thomas University um, has had a lot of tradition. You know, they play in the Sun Conference, and we actually play another team uh, in that league as well. But um, they, they, they've had a really good run. A few years ago, they beat us, I, I believe, at home. And uh, we're, we're excited to bring them in, you know, to get some, some series. And we're going to go visit them later, but to get some series of Georgia teams. And you know, we were excited to kind of start that. And uh, maybe we can continue down the road. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's one of the most, uh, you know, underutilized things um, is, you know, there's a wealth of Georgia teams. You know, you've got... Um, I mean, some pretty pretty good ones too. You know, you got your your Thomas, your Coastal Georgia, your Dalton State. Um, all three of those teams, you know, pretty much are either going to make it in the tournament or just on the outside. Um, so I, I think that's that's great to you know get some tradition going there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you know start out the year with those two games. Um, looks like you've got a home and home with Thomas. Uh, they play here, we go there. Um, but you're again having those two classics in the in the early parts of November. Um, talk a little bit about you know what those do, the kind of atmosphere that creates. Um, definitely a chance for fans to you know catch a lot of basketball here on campus. Yeah, you know I think it's important you know to to try to bring some other teams in to help create revenue in the city um, as well as getting other people in on campus to you know to to so our fans can see you know different teams and and we we try to bring in the be the better teams that we can um, to give us a really good look. And then, you know, we also we host it with another team and we want to give those teams a good look too. Um, like, you know, for instance, Dalton is coming to one of ours. They're going to um, basically be a host and we, will, we won't play them until later on in the year. Um, and, you know, just the same as IU East. And, and, and our fans may not be familiar with them, but they're one of the best Division II teams in the country and they'll be hosting the tournament with us as well. So it'll be a chance, you know, to see four really good teams go at it and, and have fun and kind of lay it all on the line. Yeah, so um, then, you know, just about early December, um, somewhere in there, you're going to start conference play because we do a home and home uh, with all of our conference teams since it's a <clears throat> relatively smaller conference. Um, got the defending national champion. I don't think anybody, anybody in the country doubts uh, the strength of the Mid-South Conference. Um, you know, pretty much if, I mean, you've got teams that have been 500 and make it to the national tournament. Um, absolutely insane competition wise. How, how do you prepare a group that's, you know, we get kids at the NAI level, you know, that are transferring from D1, small D1s, D2s, um, you know, didn't work out here, didn't work out there. Um, but I don't think they've really experienced like a Mid-South road game at Georgetown with the fans screaming in your face. Not gonna talk about the refs as right, much, right, but right, you know, right. it, it's, it is a very, very high competitive atmosphere. How do you, how do you train a, a team to, you know, I mean, essentially go to war for the second half of the season? Right, well, it's, it's, it's difficult, I say in a sense, well, you know, I was division one for 13 years and I've seen leagues and, you know, in the lower, lower major leagues, like the, like the Big South, and, and this league is every good as that league uh, from top to bottom. Uh, every night you've got a challenge at home on the road like you can lose at any point and obviously pay, facing Georgetown is a tall task and we were, we were fortunate to be one of the teams that beat them last year as they went on to win a national championship um, you know was, was I'm hoping that that will propel our team this year just to knowing that we can play with the most elite in our league and you know finishing third last year top for third in this league um, you know, our guys knew that we could play with them. Obviously, we came up short in a few games and uh, lost them in the national champion. Uh, and I'm sorry, in the conference championship game, and they got us pretty good. But we want to have an opportunity uh, to get back to that game and, and to be one of the top teams in this league. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it says everything that you know. The Mid South, we don't have uh, ten teams in the conference, so only the. Um, 
tournament champion is guaranteed a spot. But just about every year, there's three, maybe four um, Mid-South teams that are making it to the national tournament. So I think it's, it's definitely, um, you know, something to be said for the caliber of play that we have going on in the Mid-South. But, um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was amazing, you know, the kind of run that you did. Um, so let's, let's look at the, uh, you know, the conference schedule. Um, not really any, any big streaks other than uh, towards the uh, beginning of February to the end of February, you know, you've got uh, four in a row there. Um, everything else, you know, it's kind of two here, three there, two here, one there, two there. Um, kind of bounces around a little bit. Um, that can definitely be stressful for not only you, but you know your family, uh, you know your kids. Um, how do you how do you balance that you know travel schedule with bouncing around the country so much? You know, I, obviously, I've been doing this for a long time, and <laughs> it's, it, I, we we set our schedule like this, and, and it's actually uh, the non conference we set, but the conference schedule we felt like we got a pretty good shake at it. Um, we like you know finishing uh, having our last four out of six at home. Uh, we think that gives us a good chance down the stretch to be as good as we could possibly be. Um, you know, have our fans really involved in the outcome of some of those games. And you know, from from a balance standpoint, like you know, like you know, you have to be gone as part. You know, it's just part of the deal. And what you try to do is you try to prepare your team as much as you can, especially in some of the non-conference games, to have a road game or two and 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 learn how to spend the night in the hotel and then you know get up the next day and then go to shoot around and and, and play on their court. And it takes a different level of focus to win a road game uh, I believe putting those guys in those type of situations early um, it doesn't affect them later on now, obviously from a school standpoint you know you you don't want to get behind in class so you have study hall on the road and 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 you bring you know hopefully you know you can get some some teachers to give you extended time on those tests when you get back and things like that but uh, you know we hope they get adjusted to you know the rigors of, of road games and travel uh you know before we get into conference play yeah uh i mean you know i just looking at the schedule uh pikeville shawnee state knocking those out early december um because i mean that's that's your farthest road trip right there so knocking those out early uh then you know you kind of talked about uh playing dalton at home coastal georgia edward waters dalton state on the road um then we come back after christmas break uh, jump right in um, green game uh, we've talked a little bit about that and you know some other some other interviews um, I'm, I'm actually really excited about this the uh, initiative basically where um, you know more details will be coming out about those but essentially we're trying to build a, a campus atmosphere and you know basketball um, you know we've talked off camera is, is kind of one of those um, you know you, you, you buy pride in uh, sure. a basketball school um, you know, especially not having football here, uh, men's basketball is kind of, you know, it's, it's always one of the staple sports. Um, so January 16th against Georgetown here at home, I mean, I, I think it's going to be an, an insanely good atmosphere for that game. Yeah, I'm excited about it too, Billy. I mean, it, it's it's not by design that it's the Georgetown game. Like, we, we you know we we wanted to you know we wanted to make sure that um you know that we had a really good crowd here. You know, I anticipate them to be uh, preseason number one, and I pre uh, I anticipate by that time they'll be one of the top ranked teams. And um, I think it'll be a really fun atmosphere. Uh, I think if we can make it rowdy, you know, we're asking you know our student all the student athletes to come out, and you know we'll hopefully some of the DC students will come, and you know we'll get out in the community and try to invite some you know some YMCA kids or you know and, go, and just different places to come out and enjoy because a, a lot of times people don't understand like they think oh in AI they don't understand the level well you, what you're going to basically watch is a division one basketball game mm -hmm. um, so January 16th it's going to be and it's like that through all the teams in the mid-south but um, it's going to be a division one basketball game and, and it'll be a lot of guys you know uh, flying, playing above the rim, and playing fast and hard, and I think everybody—it'll be a great atmosphere for everybody to enjoy. Yeah, and I think it, it doesn't—it shouldn't go, um, you know, understated that, you know, at the level that we are, it is a Division One basketball game on the court, but the fans definitely play a role. If you Absolutely. have a very, very good—I mean. What comes to mind is, you know, our women's lacrosse team travels to Reinhardt last year. We had to play a neutral side game. 
I don't think we beat Campbellsville without the yeah, crowd. They, they um, don't. They you know, don't. it can be such a factor, especially playing at home. You know, here in Marietta, Georgia, a lot of basketball going around. Um, it can be such a huge factor. You know, definitely want to encourage everybody to come out. Um, more details will be coming out on that, but uh, absolutely can't understate enough how much the the crowd can actually mean in in a game like that. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's the cliche of the six man, as they say. <laughs> um, obviously, we we don't have a six man group, but uh, again, going back to the last year, the Reinhardt game, it was a home game for us. I mean, in that atmosphere, um, they were just as loud as it was for a home game, and I, I personally think that we have uh, the best and loudest, rowdiest, you know, student section in in the entire Mid South, and and. And you know we want everybody to come out, especially for that. We want them to come out for every game, but especially that game is one that we have kind of marked on our calendar as one that we think could be um, you know a real a turning point throughout the season, you know, for the Mid South. Yeah, definitely, because you know that that game January sixteenth, it's kind of right almost in the middle of uh, you know your your Mid South schedule. Um, after that, you host Thomas Moore two days later, and then you go on a little bit of a road trip. And then we have that home skid. Um, so talk a little bit about you know expectations uh, I, I know it's hard to um you know you don't want to you kind of want to set the line of okay well i want to talk good about my team but i don't want to be overconfident about my team um but you know from from what i've seen from what you have coming back uh still haven't seen much of of, of the new kids you know very excited to see them on the court as well um but you know as far as expectations uh you don't have to give me, you know, we're going to finish this place or we're going to do that. Um, what are what are kind of some some team goals, uh, both personally and uh, on the court for for you and the Running Eagles this year? Okay. We're going to win every game, Billy. Just so you know, <laughs> forget, forget the coaches all speak. Right, all right, and, uh, all right. No, but but you know, I I, I do want to say like I, our guys are working extremely hard. Uh, we have a very competitive schedule and you know last year i believe that you know we were snubbed out of the national tournament and we watched that and we felt like we were as good as some of those teams there and, and could have advanced you know far uh into the field of that tournament i think this year um our guys have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder about that and you know i, I believe that guys you know coming into work every single day practicing hard given everything that they have that they know our goal is to get to the national tournament now obviously we do that one game at a time but you know it we want to make sure that every time we step on the floor that we give it everything that we have and we, we walk away from the floor and we say hey we left it all on the floor so um, from an expectation standpoint you know I just want our guys to take it one game at a time respect every single opponent um, like they're playing the number one team in the country and they get better every single game yeah I mean I, I love that mentality of you know just kind of don't you you I think what defines a great team is they don't play their opponent, they play against themselves. Absolutely. Um, you know, because you see the teams that have the super highs, super lows because they're playing their opponent rather right. than, you know, I'm going to beat myself right. um, kind of thing. I, I think, you know, that is kind of a testament to last year. You know, I was definitely uh, a little surprised when the, when the rankings came out, you know, but, um, you know, early on in the year, it was, it was a roller coaster team. It was, you know, you had some super, super high quality wins mm -hmm. and then you had some super, super bad low losses. quality losses. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, I think, you know, I'm very excited to see, you know, how can you guys kind of ride that wave this mm -hmm. year? How can you maintain, um, you know, and not get, you know, too high, too low, but, you know, stay at a, at a very, very competitive, uh, standpoint. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Going through that the roller coaster, especially last year, is my first year as a head coach. I learned a lot. Uh, my, me and my staff, we learned a lot. We learned a lot about ourselves. We learned a lot about our team. Um, you know, this year, taking some of the things that we learned, transitioning to this year, um, you know, I believe that that we're trying to put ourselves in position to where you know, win this game. The next game is the next game. Mm -hmm. You know, celebrate it for 24 hours. After that, we're we're going and we're moving on to the next thing. Um, so you know, I, I do believe that that we have the right mindset. Uh, we just have to continue to, to put the work in and and respect, like again, I respect every opponent and be ready to, for each challenge that we face. Definitely. Uh, I I mean, I know I'm very excited about it. Um, like you mentioned uh, for the green game, you know, it's a, a lot of people don't know that. 
NAIA basketball is insane to watch. I mean, I've, I've heard people, you know, no disrespect to NCAA Division Three, completely different ball game, yeah. completely different level of athlete, mm -hmm. completely just all facets of the game are, you're, you're rarely going to see a, a Division Three game, in most cases, uh, go to 100 points. You, every game has the potential to go to 100 Absolutely. points in the, in the NAI. Um, so definitely excited to uh, to get the ball rolling. Uh, Coach, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate and, uh, you having me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, best of luck this year. I appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. All right, thank you.